Hi, my name is Gondrine, and today is we are we. I can't. I can't read this. I don't know who wrote this. Just like today's topic, we're improvising. Right, jazz. Jazz really isn't a certain instrument or anything like that. It's more of an improvisation of music. The first person to have ever been thought to have you ever had a dream that, that create jazz was an African-American man in the late 1800s known as Buddy Bolden, although back then it was called jazz. How do we know that this legendary man, Buddy Bolden, was the first to create jazz? We don't. It's all been through word of mouth. Buddy Bolden, the jazz legend, was unfortunately sent to a mental asylum in the early 1900s due to a drinking problem. Before he was sent there, his band made the first known instance of jazz by simply playing wherever the music took them. They didn't have a script, they didn't have any sheet music, they just played, and they thought it turned out good. Following in Buddy Bolden's footsteps, not the drinking part, <laughs> Many new great musicians began to get their start in the genre of jazz. Some of these included Bunk Johnson, Mutt Carey, Joe King, Oliver, Sidney Beck, Freddie Keppard, and of course, Jelly Roll Morton. Not this Jelly Roll, though. Any anyway, different dude. Since Buddy Bolton's invention, the new music known as jazz, two main groups began to adopt the genre into their culture. These two groups were the African Americans and the Creole musicians. Creole people being white Europeans who had fun with their black mistresses. Freddie Kepper, as we had just talked about, toured with his band playing jazz across the country before they were eventually approached by Victor Talking Studio, a record label that wanted to record their music. After refusing, the Talking Studio then went to a racist named La Roca, who released the music under the name the original Dixie Jazz Band. This greatly harmed the African-American community as La Roca was an incredibly racist man in both his song and personality. Although La Roca was a barely human piece of garbage, <coughs> the release of his disc spread the popularity of jazz to places like Chicago and New York. Funnily enough, the legendary group known as the Hellfighters were the first to introduce jazz to places like France and the other European nations during the World War. And now it's time for the open letter. That is what is known as the lick, a certain set of musical notes that has been heavily overused in many jazz songs through the years. As such, it has now become a meme in this current era. Now that we've covered the general history of jazz, I think it's time we get into the legends who made jazz what it is today. As we mentioned earlier, Charlie Parker, aka Birdman, was an African-American man in the early 1900s who was unfortunately brought into an underprivileged community when he was young and was unfortunately addicted to heroin at 16. Throughout his life, he suffered from mental abuse and extreme alcohol addiction. With few like that, you know his music was going to be something to behold. He was a very heavy influence on many jazz legends, even ones we know today, and even according to old plagiarism laws, if he wanted to, he could have sued every single jazz musician from 1940 to 1950 because he was the original creator of so much of the jazz we know and love today. Louis Armstrong, the famous astronaut, I mean, jazz musician, was born in 1900 and instantly had a very large interest in jazz. He was sent to a juvie home in 1913 for reasons unknown, and once released began to play in marching bands and jazz bands. Most notably, he was temporarily a part of Oliver King's band, the jazz legend that we had previously mentioned. Upon leaving Oliver King's band, he went to New York and began experimenting with what jazz could be. He was actually one of the main influences for the first instance of scat singing. He also had very heavy influence on modern movies, such as 
musicals and the association of jazz with love. Moving into more modern jazz musicians, John Schofield is a name you should recognize. Born in 1951 in Ohio, he took an interest in jazz and guitar at age 11. Growing up, he recorded with many recognizable names, such as Charles Mingus and Gary Burton. In 1982, he went international with his music, and through the influence of all the different cultures he met and intertwined with on his travels, got a new understanding of what music could be. Taking his two loves, jazz and guitar, he decided to combine them. Charles John Schofield then made some of the first modern instances of fusion jazz, souls, blues, and funk. And that's all for today's Crunch Points. After jazz spread, many great musicians began to crop up in the genre of jazz. People from Louis Armstrong to Birdman to James Coyce. <laughs>